Hi, William Stewart here. Um, today is Saturday, January 12th, uh, 2013. Um, I'm in a little bit of a casual mode today. Um, it's the start of a new year and I wanted to spend some time to talk to you about a couple subjects that are important to me. So pardon for my casualness. Um, a lot has been happening with pharmacy uh, in these last uh, three to four months and uh, a lot of information in the news, uh, a lot of news reports regarding the tragedies that have occurred, a lot of things that have uh, been affecting pharmacy and, uh, and people's perception of pharmacy. I wanted to communicate to you some new information as it relates to compounding pharmacies and quality control. There are many issues affecting pharmacy today, and in light of recent tragic events, media outcry, and regulatory responses, many are reacting kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Some good and some bad decisions are being made by compounding pharmacies as well as regulatory and people affecting healthcare. Um, the recent events have caused Hartley and myself to look at some new ideas and re-examine ourselves. And I, I often look into the mirror and say, am I doing everything I can to provide the best quality products for my patients and my clients? A lot depends on me. Today, I want to speak to you about environmental monitoring. And I spoke about this uh, regarding the Las Vegas meeting that I attended, but I wanted to kind of uh, bring some more information and, and get into some depths in light of recent events. It was a very unique course um, taught by leading microbiologist, international uh, leading microbiologist. I was uh, humbled and um, I was somewhat intimidated, but I learned a lot of information at this particular meeting. So today's topic is environmental monitoring. Environmental monitoring, as I have stated, is, is monitoring your environment for both viable and non-viable. What that means is, is dust particles are non-viable and bacteria or fungus are viable. And monitoring these environments to ensure that you have the best environment for compounding sterile products. Something that I have deeply embraced um, going back into the 90s and I understood this. Um, I want to tell you a little bit more about the course that I attended. Uh, this course presented many issues of environmental monitoring, but one in particular uh, presentation was the emphasis of the United States Pharmacopeia chapter of what's called as 1116. And uh, this titled, Microbiological Control and Monitoring of Aseptic Processing Environments. Very long title. Um, it begins to discuss environmental monitoring and uh, of the many factors that are associated with this. And I'll start off with the premises, environmental monitoring cannot detect all events that may affect the microbiological quality of an environment or of the compounded products. But it is a tool, another indicator that we use to assess the environment to again have the optimal environment for sterile processing or aseptic processing. Um, in monitoring the environments, uh, you utilize uh, instruments, which are air particle counters or active air samplers. The uh, laser air particle counter actually measures dust or the non-viable particulates, and then the active air sampler takes large volumes of air across a growth media to capture uh, bacterial or fungal growth. One of the new concepts they presented to me was something that was, it was a little startling, and it was the expectation of zero organisms in your samples is unrealistic. And I used, to, I used to bank a lot on getting zero samples of saying, you've got a great room. We get zero samples, uh, but was don't bank on that. Don't rely on that as that is the absolute quality of your air. You have to assume that you're going to capture some microbial growth. Uh, and so to, to look in and rest on your heels of, I got zero counts, is an unrealistic perspective to be from. Um, then the second part they said is whether you're catching one CFU, which stands for a colony forming unit, or three colony forming units. That shows that you're, you're, you're sampling and you are recovering bacteria. Great. But there was no difference between one or three. Some of the old standards looked at uh, the number of CFUs as being your limits to which you're operating. And we have worked under this premise. The new guidelines and maybe the new rationale for monitoring is, is that we know that you're going to get something, but now it's a percentage of the number of samples. So what it said to me was, is that you need to employ your environmental monitoring program, understand that you are going to get, uh, you'll find CFUs or colony forming units, but also the percentage of your sampling. And so not so much the number of units, but the percentage of positive growths. Interesting. 
What this said to me was, is you're going to fight, you should find growth. But two is that you should not find growth in a preponderance or a high percentage. Some of the other new parameters is really looking at that you'll get positive growth, but that the percentage of positive growth is very small in relationship to the number of samples. So you're looking at not only just the CFUs, but how many positives you have as it relates to your total sampling plan. So this has caused me pause to look at our environmental monitoring plan and I'm now augmenting the number of samples that we're doing in the room as well as looking at the number of CFUs. So there's a little bit of a hybrid in determining the old standard and integrating it into the new standard. The environmental monitoring program at Hartley is changing. We are adapting to new situations, new guidelines, new regulations, and new standards for quality. This is the Hartley Standard. Thank you for your time.